Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic practices and duties upon a Muslim by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. May Allah prolong his life. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Na. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Again. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let us continue our discussion on wudu. Sheikh Na, we've discussed wudu, we've discussed why it's, necess- why it's necessary, we've discussed where to use wudu, we've discussed mustahabat. Makrubat. Let's discuss how to perform wudu. How does one actually perform wudu? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin. With regard to the wudu itself um, and how is it done, um, to start with, of course, you need to have the intention, as I've mentioned the last episodes that you need to have the intention of the wudu so you begin with the intention of um, making the wudu for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qurbatan Allah ta'ala and you start of course with the face so you begin uh, pouring the water um, on the face from where the hairline grows all the way down okay so when you say pour the water do I, like, I've got my glass here, do I just pour like this and I start to do like that? Or do I need to actually first put it into my hand and then, you know, like, like so? It doesn't matter. The main thing is that you pour the water on your uh, face and you rub down all the way down okay. from where the hair grows on the top and then all the way down to the end of the chin. Okay. So from here all the way down. That is uh, the wajib and the requirement for, for the wudu. Now, with regard to um, the span from the left to the right, um, the, the measure is that you take your uh, middle finger and the thumb. Mm-hmm. So that actually measures for you uh, the, um, the, sp- the space and the boundary that you need to do the wudu, the minimum. Of okay. course, you, you, you can go back to the left or to the right, which is, which is good. But the main ones are uh, when you actually start rubbing your hand over the face all the way down, you have this boundary from the um, middle finger and the thumb. Mm-hmm. And the rest is not covered. But you can actually go and do um, the left and the so- right side, go further than the limit which is given. Which is good in overall. Sheikh, now what happens with someone who doesn't have a hairline at the, at, at the front? What happens to someone whose hand may be a bit smaller than average or someone's hand which is larger than average? So someone who has a small hand will just wipe this bit just you know, by, by the eyes and down. Someone who's got such a big hand will be wiping from ear to ear, you know, the whole face. What happens in those situations? Well... They need to look at the people of the average. So av- the average is, this is the hand, for example. This is the average. And this is the face. And the hairline grows in this location, for example. You look at the average of the people who wash their face. How do they do it? From where? No matter if he's bald, he starts from this location. You know, the normal where the hair grows. For them, they have to see exactly where um, the hair grows, although they, ha- they don't have any, any hair. So maybe where it used to be. Exactly, Mm -hmm. exactly. And likewise for the size of the hand, if it's small or big, again, um, if it was too small, then they have to rub all the way to the left and the right, make sure that it reaches all the sides. If it's too big, then they have to just cover the the main area. So they don't have to actually wash their ears, both Mm -hmm. ears. Um, So you go back to what is known as urf. You know, people average of, the use of, of, of the wudu and the water, mm-hmm. and that would be sufficient. What about when there is something on the skin? So, for example, when I wake up in the morning for Fajr, sometimes I've got some, some dust and crumbs and debris in, my, in between my eyes. Maybe I've uh, cut myself from before, from, uh, from shaving or something, and there's, there's a scab or there's some blood on my, on my cheek. Do I just continue with all that normal? Or? Well... Any obstacles, any particles, dirt, which are on the face, um, seen, then they must be removed. 
um, anything that blocks the reach of the water to the face. And likewise to the arms and other parts of the wudu. Uh, um, you have to make sure they are removed, and especially the najasa. If there's a blood, if there's anything else, najis, on the, uh, the, the location of the wudu, you must be removed and purified, and then you use the wudu. So yes, you have to make sure that there's no uh, particles on, that, that prevents the reach of the water uh, to the skin. Uh, that should be fine. Okay, Sheikh, when uh, washing the face, um, what about uh, the nostrils? Do I need to put water in the nostrils? Uh, the lips, sometimes people forget that they have to do the lips as well. Do these have to be covered? Basically, what you have to wash in the wudu is the visible parts of the face. That is the wajib. So when you close your lips, the visible parts must be washed. The inside parts of the nose or uh, the mouth or the lips, you don't have to wash them. It's just the ones which are visible, can be seen uh, from outside. Otherwise, uh, you don't have to uh, wash the inside. So the first part is washing the face, and then we go on to washing the arms, correct? Exactly, yeah. And we do that from where to where? We actually begin to wash first the right arm okay. from the elbow all the way down to the tips of the fingers, so all the way down. So you don't, you don't wash half the way. You have to make sure you wash all the way down to the tips of the fingers, all the way down. And likewise for the left arm as well, from the elbow and all the way down to the tips of the fingers. What about in between the fingers? Is I that mean, it's good to actually rub between them just to make sure that the water reaches uh, in between. But usually it reaches when you actually pour the water and the water runs through mm -hmm. the arms. Usually it reaches that part. If it's, I mean, you have a, you open the, uh, you know, the hand fingers and all together. But it's, it's better than uh, to actually uh, make sure that it's been reached as well. Okay. And like you were saying, you can't go... Say I went to this direction, and then I see, oh, there's something, uh, I've missed a spot, can I do that? Or must I pick it up and then go over it? No, you can't go back, but to go back a little bit is fine, just a little bit, but uh, not uh, to go back all the way from the beginning. So, so uh, what, would be, what would be sufficient? Do like that? Just a little bit you can go back, but not to go back the whole way. So not like uh, that? Yeah, like it's going to be a, a different way of the So, so would, would this be okay? Just a bit, just a bit, that's fine. You don't have to go back <laughs> too much, yeah. Ascent, uh, Sheikh, Ascent. What's the next step in wudu? So we've had washing the face, we've had the right arm first, the left arm first, elbow to fingertip. Is it finished there? Well, no, the next part is to wipe, actually. So we have finished the washing of the face and the both arms. Now, to wipe the head. Now. The location of wiping the head is the, the front quarter of, of the head, which is actually adjacent to the forehead. Okay. Um, you have to just to wipe with the wetness of the wudu. You're not allowed to actually take water from a new source, new source of water. In terms of the, um, uh, the mustahab precaution is to actually wipe with the length of one finger. Okay. But um, you can do it less than that. That's just mustahab. And the better is to have uh, with, the, uh, with the joint of three fingers mm -hmm. and you do the, the, the wipe all the way down. That's mustahab. That's the best. Okay. Well, at least, as I said, it's just one finger and a little bit of, of, of wiping just to move the finger towards the down. Does it matter which direction you go in? Does it have to be from back to front or can you do from front to back? No, it has to be from uh, back to front. So okay, top to bottom. Yeah, well, exactly, yeah. Okay. So, Sheikhna, what about wiping? Does it have to touch the skin of the head, of the scalp? Or is it okay just to do it on top of the hair? Well, it's not wajib to actually um, wipe on the skin of the head. Um, you can actually, if you have enough hair, you can just rub on, the hair, on, on your uh, hair. Um, the issue is with those who have long hair, like some ladies and even some men which uh, it can be m moved from one side to the other side, to the left, oh, to, wow. to the right. They have to make sure that they, uh, um, they have to rub and wipe on the root of the hair. Mm -hmm. So they remove the excess hair and they wipe on the root of the hair. 
that's important for them. Otherwise, if the hair like yours and others, they can easy, just easily wipe on it, and inshallah maqbul. Shaykh uh, that's a question I have. Most of uh, our brothers, you know, they, they uh, perform the ritual of tatbir, the holy ritual of tatbir. This can cause issues with uh, mas'ah of the head. Um, obviously, we don't want to open wounds or cause any bleeding because obviously we're trying to stay tahir because we want to pray salah. What advice can you give them? Uh, what is the best method to do wudu and uh, the mas'ah of the head in that state? Well, there are two options. The first option that if the location of the wound is, is narrow and small, they can actually wipe to the left or the, the right side of, of the, uh, the, the, the front part of the, uh, okay. the head. Um, if it's a, a wide wound and covers the whole part of the, the front part of the head, then they can just put a, a plaster or, or anything clean, a fabric or something, and they can wipe on it. Okay. Which is known as uh, wudu al jabira. We'll come, inshallah, to this uh, specific oh, type yeah. of wudu, inshallah. And what is the next step then after wiping the head? After wiping uh, the head, uh, the next wajib in wudu is to wipe the feet. So you begin with your right uh, hand to wipe uh, the right side of the, uh, of the, of the foot. So the right foot. Exactly. Okay. And then you wipe the other side, the left, left side of the side foot, with the left foot, with the left, with the left hand. Exactly. And what is important with regard to the uh, wiping, with regard to the washing, that's fine. Um, you have to make sure that the wiping uh, places of the, the head and the, and the feet, they must be dry. Okay. In other words, if they are wet, extreme wet, you have to dry them and then you wipe. Mm -hmm. Um, the Sayyid says that even if it's a bit moisture, but the wetness of your hand is more than mm -hmm. uh, the moisture of the hair or both feet, then that should be, be sufficient, that's fine. But the main thing is that they shouldn't be wet. Uh -huh. That when you, when you wipe your hand on your head, you can't differentiate. Is it the wetness of the hands or is oh, it the, the wetness previous, of the uh, previous? That's important. I see. So what about when we are wiping the feet? Where do we start? Where do we finish? And, and what direction do we go in? Well, you have to begin from the, the tiptoes, mm -hmm. uh, the fingers, and all the way to the ankle, ankle bones. That's okay. the, uh, the minimum required. And for the mustahab as well, you can go uh, uh, as a precaution. Mustahab, ihtiyat mustahababi. You can go up to the joints as well. Okay. So, uh, I mean... Uh, if you want to go up to the joints, you can, but the, the required one is, is up to the ankle bone. So you're saying just, just from the tip of the toes, past the nails, go to the forefoot, exactly. up towards the ankle, and the if curves. you want, you can go a little bit more past the curve exactly. onto the joint. Exactly. Inshallah. And that's mustahab, as I nice. mentioned, the joint ones. Yeah. Shaykh, I have a few questions. Um, the first question is that was sent in to us was, um, this brother, he puts natural products in his hair. So you might have gel or grease or wax or oil. Some of this is waterproof. Some of this mixes with the water or can be, uh, let's just say, uh, an inconvenience for when doing mas'a. What is the ruling in regards to that when performing wudu? Well, if the gel um, provides some kind of, of obstacle and prevents the reach of water to the head, then he needs to actually wash away the, uh, the gel and dry it and, and then be able to wipe uh, on his head. Otherwise, uh, if, if there are no effects of the gel in terms of uh, providing some kind of uh, barrier to allow the water to reach the head, then that's fine. Excellent. Okay. Sheikh, now a lot of people, um, they would have, they assume that Ghusl can be done in place of wudu. Is this the case? Well, inshallah, we'll come to the rules of the ghusl. Um, the only ghusl that you can actually do which replaces the wudu, the act of wudu itself, is the ghusl of janabah. Okay. Um, other ghusl, such as the ghusl of Jum'ah, ghusl of Eid, um, ghusl of, of Tawbah, and so forth, they won't replace the wudu at all. 
It's only the Ghusl al-Janaba which replaces the wudu. Hassan Sheikh, thank you very much for your knowledge and for this discussion. And thank you to all the viewers that have been joining us. Inshallah, it was very informative for you. And inshallah, we have made wudu a lot more easier for yourself to perform. If you have any questions regarding ahkam, please send them to the contact details provided. And myself and the Sheikh will inshallah answer them. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.